Yo, what's good, YouTube? Welcome back. It's your boy Scalar, and today we got Drake diss track, but everything explained. All right, so we got every diss and Drake diss track explained, and yeah, we're gonna check it out. I'm sick of shit. I've been sick the past week. I'm sorry for the lack of uploads. I'm still going through it. Yeah, I'm even wearing like my girl like hoodie and whatnot. But anyways, yeah, that's not the point. Hey, I might gotta pay the bills, right? So help a boy out. Hit the like, subscribe, and yeah, let's get it. I could never be nobody number one fan Your first number one, I had to put it in your hand You pussies can't get booked outside America for now From a surface view, the line could apply to a lot of people Because there was an era where a Drake stimulus package Could almost guarantee a number one song It could guarantee your career would be made And a lot Facts. of rappers tapped in for that stimulus package But Drake Facts. was talking about future Bro, Drake put on so many people, bro Oh my god, man And here's how we know he was talking about future See, on the intro to We Don't Trust You, Future called Drake his number one fan. You a nigga number one fan, dog. Sneak this and I don't understand, dog. Drake was reminding Future, I can't be your number one fan because your first number one, I was the one who put it in your hand. Do you soon forget Damn. that your first number one was with me and Thug on Way Too Sexy? So Drake That's was a sexy <laughs> son Future letting him know, bro. Bro, like, stop, like, the big guy talk, bro. Like, you're literally my son. Like, I'm literally the reason why... You have a striving rap career. I'm out in Tokyo because I'm big in Japan. I'm the hit maker, y'all depend on. Backstage in my city, it was friends on. You won't never take no chain off of us. How the fuck you be stepping with a size seven man zone? This mm -hmm. the part with the bite, nigga. What's up? I know my picture on the wall when y'all cook up. Extortion, mm -hmm. baby. Hope for red, you been shook up. Cause top told you drop and give me 50 lights of push ups. Hood. This was clearly about Kendrick. I mm -hmm. mean, it's obvious, but. The bar is actually really... Kendrick did used to make workout videos, right? Or am I tripping? Or I saw a video one time of him, like, doing some type of exercise. I don't know if it was, like, sit-ups or something. You know, doing something on a park. And I'm like, oh, that's what he been... Like, did he, like, retire? Because I was wondering when, when I saw it, I was like, wait, did he retire from music or something? Because he was, like, MIA. And then I saw that, and I was, like, confused. Great and complex. If you... Put it in full context and understand the full details. So when he says backstage in my city, it was friend zone. He's referring to when people were rumoring that Drake and Kendrick were beefing. Drake actually showed up to Kendrick Lamar's Big Stepper tour when he landed in Toronto. And apparently they had a conversation backstage. Here is Drake actually at the concert watching from like a skybox. <laughs> I remember seeing this clip, I think on TMZ. So obviously when Drake says, how you big stepping with size sevens on, it's a play on word on Kendrick Lamar's tour, Big Steppers, in which Drake attended. And it's also a play on Kendrick Lamar being a really miniature man. He's about like five foot three. He's really tiny. Now when Drake says that Kendrick Lamar is, is an extortion, that's crazy how these rappers be so short, bro. <laughs> God. God damn. Person, baby. Uh, he's referring to Kendrick Lamar essentially coming into the game with some street dudes from Compton who started a label that became TDE. And Drake is alluding to the fact that Kendrick Lamar is being extorted by TDE. And now Drake's, uh, I guess, meaning of extortion if you break it down, he's saying that Kendrick Lamar is in a really messed up deal or was in a really messed up deal Damn. and that he was given TDE 50-50 of everything. Your last one, Brick, you really not on shit. They make excuses for you because they hate to see me lit. Pull your contract because we got to see the split. The way you doing splits, bitch, your pants might rip. You better do that motherfucking show inside the beat. Maroon 5 need a verse, you better make it witty. Then we need a verse for the Swifties. Top say drop, you better drop and give them 50. Clearly about Kendrick, Drake is repeating the recurring rhetoric surrounding Kendrick Lamar, which is he's overhyped and he really doesn't produce great music as often as people will reward him for. And he's also saying that last Valid album that Kendrick point. Lamar dropped, which is pretty much that consensus, it was a flop, right? The album was a flop. It came and went. Hip hop really didn't receive it how they received his other albums. And the album was just a bad album. It was a poor album. And Drake is just repeating the rhetoric. Now, we know this one is about Kendrick Lamar because Drake brings up Maroon 5 and Kendrick Lamar and Maroon 5 had a song together. Now, Drake also makes fun of Kendrick Lamar doing these weird off-brand like features. And he also tells Kendrick, man, like, hey, listen, 
Drop more record, man. Feel me? Top needs is 50, which is also a play on Kendrick Lamar's, I guess, contract dispute with TDE, which led to him leaving the label. Not to, like, pause it right now, right? But it's crazy to think that Drake have an ongoing beef with Kendrick. If you really think about it, the amount of work and Drake did and put into the game compared to Kendrick is, like, night and day. And I'm surprised Drake is even, like, wasting his time with this shit, to be honest. I know Kendrick is great and all, but the value of work compared to Hannah, I can understand, like, Drake and probably, like, Wayne going at it. You feel me? Like, two alpha males. But, like, Kendrick is, like... He's great, but like compared to the amount of work compared to Drake is not even close. Pip squeak pipe down, you ain't in no big three. Scissor got you wiped down, Travis got you wiped down, Savage got you wiped down. Like your label boy, you in a scope right now. And you gon' feel the aftermath of what I write down. I'm at the top of the mountain, so you tight now. Just to add his talk with your ass, I had to hike down. Big difference between Mike then and Mike now. What the fuck is this a 20 v1 nigga was a prince to a king he a son nigga get more love in a city that you find nigga again mm. clearly more distance than kendrick but let's break down the context clues just in case they weren't obvious so kendrick lamar responded back to drake's and right he does son the shit out of kendrick i ain't gonna even lie <laughs> j cole first person oh shooter my God, bro. when j cole essentially said the big three was kendrick drake and him Kendrick Lamar responded back on like that when he says, F the big three, it's just big me. Motherfuck the big three, nigga, it's just big me. And Drake is saying, Ooh. sir, no, 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 no. You can't be the big three because the numbers don't say you are the big three. Kendrick Lamar's last album, Mr. Morale, Max. sold 295,000 copies first week. His label mate, a former label mate, associate, SZA, outsold him with 318,000 copies first week. And Travis Scott obliterated Damn. him with 496,000 copies first week. So Drake made a great point, right? You're not big three if SZA wiped you down and Travis Scott wiped you down. And you certainly can't be... Travis Scott? All right, cool. It's Travis Scott. But SZA? <laughs> Bro, the SZA part is what makes this shit even like... It, what makes this shit bad? Travis Scott is like, okay, it's Travis Scott. But SZA, my nigga? SZA? Like, nah big three if you're not even like the highest selling artist on your label on your like your little label now now Kendrick Lamar has left TDE so SZA isn't really his label mate anymore but still the point still goes bruh you can't be no big three bruh if SZA is out selling you sorry now That's the crazy. second half of that bar is probably the hardest line on this song when he says big difference between Mike then and Mike now what the f is this a 20 v1 nigga What's a prince to a king? <laughs> son, nigga. That was a direct response to Kendrick Lamar's line on Like That when Kendrick says, Why Prince outlived prince Mike king? Jack, alluding to the fact like, that Prince and the Michael Jackson debate was Prince was the pure artist. Michael Jackson was like the star, was the person who was sort of presented the songs he was being written for. He couldn't play no instruments. So essentially saying the pure artist is always going to outlive just the star with the voice. Best work is a light pack, nigga. Prince outlived Mike Jack, nigga. Boom. And the line itself was just inaccurate, bro. Like, Boom. if this was a comparison, <laughs> Drake would be Prince and Michael Jackson. Drake is the all-around artist who could play instruments, make beats, produce, sing, rap. Kendrick Lamar is just a rapper. Drake is the pure artist. So, like, yeah, I never quite get that. But Drake remixing and saying, yo, what's a prince to a king, a son? You know, that was just too hard, bro. <laughs> but that was, yo, that was too hard. Metro, shut your whole ass, ass up and make some drums, nigga. Yeah, this is a tough one, bro. I, I can't put... That line was the hardest line in the dish rack. No lie. When he just straight up called Metro by name, I said, shut your whole ass, bro. That shit was the hardest line in the whole dish track. <laughs> put my mind to it, bro. Who is he talking about? Maybe he's talking about Metro Booming, man. Maybe he's telling Metro Booming, bro, to shut up. And stop being a snake and a dweeb who's trying to line up these different plays and go against me and drop two albums to, <laughs> you know, to try to tear me down. Maybe he's telling Metro, man, to shut up and just put them drums on them beats again, bro. You feel me? And stop trying to click up with the entire industry to diss me. Yeah, I'm a six guy. I'm a front runner. Y'all nigga manager was Chuz little blunt runner. 
plane of six and you boys ain't even come from it. And when you boys got rich, you had to run from it. Yeah. Cash blowing, able bread out here tricking. Trickin'? Shit we do for bitches, he doing for niggas. What the fuck? This was a direct <laughs> diss at the weekend. He didn't even leave no mystery, bro. He said names in this verse. Now, he mentioned a couple of people. All right? He mentioned Cash. Now, Cash, for you guys who don't know, is the weekend's manager or he's EXO's manager, like the director over there. Now, when OVO EXO was together, apparently Cash used to roll under one of Drake's homies, Chubbs, and be sort of Chubbs' runner and assistant. Now, he's the manager over at EXO. So, Drake sort of took a shot there. Now, he also said that Cash is spending the weekend's Abel's money and doing things for men that they do for women. So, I don't know what that means, bro. I don't know if bro is out here zesty, moving crazy, all right, tricking on men, right, for yeah. the pussy. I, I don't know, bro. <laughs> but it looks like Drake just exposed that man, bro, and forced him out the closet. Jets, whips, chains, wiki, wiki, wiki. Spinning like you trying to fuck, boy, you tripping, boy, you tripping. Drizzy chipping Dale, probably got your bitch in there. I just got him done, boy, don't make me at the chipping nail. Rolling loud stage, I would turn, that was slick as hell. Shit will probably change if your BM start to kiss and tell. When Drake says, mm. it will probably change if your BM starts to kiss and tell. Mm. He's telling ASAP Rocky his relationship would change and how he views Rihanna will completely change if she actually told him exactly what she did with Drake in the bedroom. Now, this comes as a Damn. response to ASAP Rocky telling Drake uh, that he smashed Drake's baby mama before his first son, which is obviously Adonis, right? So he's saying that before Drake got his baby mama pregnant, he had smashed the baby mama. Heard a son, I smashed before you birthed, son. Flacco hit it first, son. Drake is telling ASAP. It's so weird how there's like millions of females, right, in this country. And they how these like celebrities end up with the same baby mamas and the same females like how like how do you end like do you all do they only see like verification like checks and they'll be like okay i'll just date her or some shit like you feel me i just wonder how like they're always like in the same circle they're always you know, like the same rotation like you making these jokes and rap songs about smash my baby mama but that smile would change real quick and your relationship would change in a heartbeat if your baby mama told you exactly what me and her did in bed, which is like, duh, right? And I, like, I never understood why Rocky would even take that approach and say, yo, I smashed your girl when Drake also smashed his girl. Hugs and kisses, man, don't tell me about no switches. I'll be rocking every fucking chain I own next busy. Hey, I'll be with some bodyguards like Whitney, Top say, drop your little midget ass, better fucking, hey. This was another <laughs> diss at Kendrick. Now, this was also kind of clever. So, Drake was making... He said, they just got me out here talking like I'm 50. <laughs> making a mockery of Kendrick Lamar doing push-ups oh outside, like, the prison yard. Oh. So, I wasn't tripping. Okay, cool. It was also a double entendre because on top of drop down and give him 50, when he says, yo, you better drop when Top say drop and give him 50, he's referring to you better drop that music when Top Dog of TDE, you know, and the head of TDE. When he says drop music, Damn. you better drop music and give him 50% of everything. So making fun of Kendrick Lamar's contract with TDE. Now, bro, I was told Kendrick Lamar is out of that contract, so this may be some old stuff. I don't know. Right, so, so he's making fun of the contract plus also the doing push-ups. Again, a subtle diss, but brilliant as well. Niggas really got me out here rapping what I'm living. I might take it late, this girl a couple like on Ricky. Can't believe he jumping in, this nigga turning 50. An obvious and clear diss at Rick Ross. He's playing into like the officer Rick Ross rhetoric. Rick Ross was a correctional officer at some point. Drake says, might take your girl and cuff him like Ricky. And then he says, yo, I can't believe that Rick Ross is jumping into this. He's like 50. Right, and that's Drake essentially saying, bro, I don't understand why Shit. Rick Ross is choosing to be for me when we always just make hits. <laughs> now, if you guys don't know, Rick Ross unfollowed Drake, all right, after Future and Metro dropped their album, Dissing Drake. For some reason, Rick Ross don't like Drake, and we don't know why. Now, Drake did get back Damn, at Rick bro. Ross by inviting Rick Ross, <laughs> I guess, ex-girlfriend. Bro, what's really going on in hip-hop, bro? This is like a 
huge ass like line divided and it just like literally like what's going on bro rick ross and drake got beef now it's just like what <laughs> friend to his tour date every song that made it on a chart he got from jizzy spend that little check you gotta stay up out my business nigga shout out to the hooper that be busting out the gritty we know why you mad nigga i ain't even tripping this was definitely the shot at john moran now john moran and drake has them beef publicly, so it's unclear exactly where the conflict is. However, John Moran used to date Lotto's sister right around the same time that Drake and Lotto's sister was caught outside together. Oh, Drake this everybody. John Moran too? God damn. Thank you. So apparently John Moran and Drake have been beefing behind the scenes ever since. All that little heartbroken Twitter shit for bitches. This for all the top dogs dropping, give me 50, drop, drop. And that fucking song y'all got to not start the beef with us. This shit being brewing in a pot now, I'm heating up. I don't mm. care what Cole think, that dot shit was weak as fuck. Another very direct diss, but Drake is making it clear that Kendra Lamar's verse on Like That was not the beginning of this beef. Because a lot of people think that that's the beginning of the beef is not. Drake is making it clear that's not the beginning. And then also, too, uh, he takes a shot at J. Cole apology. So if you yeah, guys don't like... know, J. Cole dropped a diss on Kendrick Lamar. And then J. Cole <laughs> took to the stage to essentially apologize to Kendrick Lamar for calling his first album a classic. But then his second album, Born, and his last album, A Brick. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to, like, get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel like, that shit damn, disrupts bro. my fucking peace. So what I want to say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? When I can understand you apologizing, bro, but this, to do the whole whole 180 and start like deriding and start saying like, oh, he's so great and I'm, bro, you're praising the song that he diss you on, bro. Like, do you not realizing like what you're doing, bro? Like, what you did, bro? That's like, Nah, your whole ca rap career, that whole shit, like, you might just flush it down the toilet, bro. When J. Cole dropped the Kendrick Lamar diss, it was a narrative going around based on the diss track that Kendrick Lamar first album was good, but every album since was trash. And that narrative was heating up because J. Cole dropped a lyrical masterpiece so potent that people couldn't help but think, damn, <laughs> maybe J. Cole is right. Maybe Kendrick is dropping... Like overrated pieces of work but then that narrative got squashed as soon as j cole apologized well drake is back to heat up the narrative which is why he's telling fans forget what cole says bro believe me <laughs> kendrick lamar last album was bricks is overrated kendrick lamar is trash champagne tripping he is not fucking easing up nigga calling top to see if top wanna piece it up top wanna piece it up top wanna piece it up nah pussy now you on your own when you speaking up you don't roll me to this is not fucking deep enough begging cops or not boy you not fucking beating us numbers wise i'm out of here you you not fucking creeping up money wise i'm out of here you not fucking sneaking up corn ball your show money merch money feed us i'ma let you niggas Damn. work it out because i seen enough this ain't even everything i know don't wait the demon up this ain't even everything i know don't wait the demon up drop and give me 50 all you fuck niggas teaming up Shout out to Drake, man, for playing my boy <laughs> Academics on the outro, man. Now, when Drake is telling Kendrick to drop, 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 he's telling Kendrick, bro, like, bro, I'm sick of it, man. I'm done with the, oh, I got a nuclear against Drake. Now, Kendrick Lamar has been, like, kind of floating this out there for a while now that he has a Drake, like, a Drake diss track so potent it would end Drake's career. And nobody has really challenged Kendrick Lamar, like, to really drop it, right? It's sort of been this before. vague threat, this open threat that Kendrick Lamar has always had. Drake is saying, bro, I'm done with the threats, drop it. <laughs> Let's go to war, drop it. 
All right. Now I've been doing he another be breakdown of the honest. actual disses. So like watch out for that, man. And if you're still watching this, man, click on this video somewhere on my screen to find out how Sharp and A D back and forth could lead to a very all right, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoy. Please leave a like, comment, subscribe. I hope you guys made it this far in the video. If you did, just comment saying what's good. And yeah, I will pin your comment. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy. And see you for the next one.